Okay, inflation fears among Americans continue to rise. It's really become public enemy number one. A new poll shows that 68% of Americans think inflation is a long-term problem. And very interestingly, 51% support cutting spending, as in federal spending, to stop inflation. Now, how about that? Join me now to discuss my great friend, former Reagan economic advisor and Presidential Medal of Freedom winner, Art Laffer. Arthur, um, are you surprised 68% think it's a long-term problem? No, I think it's a long-term problem as well. Uh, I think the people are very prescient on that. And we've had a real bout of inflation recently, Larry. And uh, there's every reason to believe that wages have gone up a lot, that the government's spending money paying people not to come back to work, which will cause inflation. There's a lot of belief that the Fed doesn't know what it's doing with regard to monetary policy. So it's very reasonable that people would be worried about long-term inflation. Uh, so I'll read you some more out of this poll. 51% think cutting spending to stop inflation. That's number one, cut spending. 32% um, want price controls. So those are the dummies in the class, right? You don't like price controls, <laughs> do you? <laughs> now, right. it, but it does get better. This is the, uh, you know, tips poll, <clears throat> Rag Meyer, The guy's a fabulous pollster, IBD, tips, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So 30% think... Um, Inflation is caused by overregulation, especially the energy sector. So they're smart. 29%, listen to this, 29% want to cut taxes on small businesses to reduce inflation. Now, that is very cool. And then 26% said the Fed should stop printing money. So except, so you got this 32%, uh, the dummies who want price controls. But the rest of this is pretty intelligent. So what do you make of it? What's your priority? Okay, you're worried about inflation. Well, I think what should we do? Well, I am worried about inflation, but price controls, Larry. Imagine if we set government uh, pay payrolls fixed so that we couldn't raise the pay for government officials. I think in that sense, the price control people would probably be correct. I mean, all of this is very common sense, what they're saying, and I think all of it really should be followed. We're spending way, way, way too much. This bill is terrible, and I think the bill before it, the the recon uh, the uh, infrastructure bill is also way, way, way too large. The Fed doesn't know what it's doing. All the spending they're taking people out of the workforce. I think these people really know what they're saying when they're polled. Uh, they understand inflation better than most economists do. You know, it's cool that in this 26% uh, say the Fed should stop printing money. And it was interesting, Art, in Joe Manchin's memo to Chuck Schumer last summer, July, when they tried to make a deal on this uh, crazy uh, reckless package. He has, though, the Fed should end quantitative easing. And he's very worried about inflation. In that, fact, the thrust of Manchin's opposition is spending too much <clears throat> creates higher inflation, but he also fingers the Fed. Should the Fed stop, um, should the Fed stop QE? Yes, of course it should. When you look at what's going on in the market, Larry, and let me just take you to the 10-year bond yield, uh, which is uh, something like around 150, something like that. The tip shield is way, way, way below zero, Larry. I mean, that tells you that people are expecting the real return on a unit of capital over the next decade to decline at over 1% per annum. Mm -hmm. And that gives you an inflation number of about 2.5%. But this quantitative easing, all these government policies are telling us they're going to reduce growth rates dramatically, the market says. And that's in conjunction with higher inflation. What could be possibly worse than that? Lower growth and higher inflation. It sounds like a losing policy set to me. I think the Fed should stop doing what it's been doing to get us to this situation. In other words, let markets solve the problem. I think the government should stop interfering with all this spending and all these huge bills with reconciliation, three and a half trillion, one and a half trillion. They should stop all that, start living within their means, and let the economy solve itself. I'd, I'd go back to what President Reagan said. You know, don't just stand there. Undo, undo something. something. I know, I the love government that. has been way too active for way too long, Larry. It's time to get them to pull back and just cool it. So, uh... Why do you think uh, Janet Yellen defended this appointment? You know, I can't let a show go by with at least talking about Moscow State University. 
And this woman that's going to be that's being nominated for controller of the currency, which is a very big job, as you well know. And she's from Moscow State University, and she got there on a Lenin scholarship. And she hates banks, and she wants to nationalize the whole American banking system. Um, Janet Yellen defended her today as a knowledgeable policymaker. What do you think? <laughs> you know, it sounds like a perfect record for me for this administration. <laughs> I don't know how they find these people. Yeah. I've never seen someone like that. I mean, you've described something there in a resume that I couldn't have imagined if I had tried my very best to imagine it. Now, why would you do that here in the U.S., especially when, you know, it's going to be bad economics and also really bad politics? Who on earth wants to have Putin's monetary policy put into the U.S.? I mean, not I. But uh, Janet Yellen's got her own guidance there. I don't know whether this was forced upon her, whether she chose it herself. Well, the rumors. Uh, she seems to be a very good soldier for Biden, which means not a very good soldier for the U.S. economy. And uh, I think that doesn't make any sense. Get normal people, bankers, to be in the control of the currency, people who understand that there are lots of good people out there who are American-trained, good economists, who can do a great job. It, we don't need to stretch to things like this, Larry. The trouble we is, just don't. The trouble We've is, had enough of excitement already. The trouble is the progressive left hates bankers. And the trouble is the progressive left hates businesses. They hate profits. And they don't realize it's going to damage the middle class. But I'll just say, Art, the same people who cooked up this Moscow State nomination, they're the people who say $6 trillion of spending is the answer to high inflation. Go figure. Go figure. I mean, it's the gift that figure. keeps it's, on giving. It's amazing, isn't it, Larry? But, I mean, where has it gone to? Where, what have we come to? I mean, I can't stand another jolt in this system. Everything these people do is jolting in the extreme and just keeps you on your toes and fearful all the time. You know, it's time for a change. Just, I think yeah. they should just settle down, let the Fed just try to control inflation. That's it. I think the government should live within its means. Mm. I, I don't think they should raise taxes. Raising taxes has never been a good idea uh, for the economy or for revenues. It just makes no sense. Just stop already. Yeah. Just let things run. Let well, this economy come back healthily. Gonna, you know, free market economics, country. Larry, is most. Is, yeah, free market economics is most important in times of crisis. Yeah. That's when you get your hands off the wheel. I mean, Carrie Underwood said it beautifully. Let Jesus take the wheel. You remember that song? <laughs> Let free markets just take the wheel and run it. They'll solve you know, these Art, problems beautifully, I gotta Larry, go as out. they always have. I got to get out, but I'll just say I yearn. Sorry. For, I yearn for the quiet, orderly, prosperous days of President Donald Trump. That's it. That's Me what the country too. needs. Me too. All right, Laffer, see you soon. Thanks very much for tonight.